Go ahead, please. Since Pat Cash's victory over Ivan Lendl in the 1987 Wimbledon final, we've seen many a Grand Slam champion clambering up to their box to celebrate with coaching staff and family. But it's not uncommon on the tennis circuit to see parents as coaches in the player box. Why? Well, as an individual sport, tennis requires a lot of time, effort and resources from parents to nurture their child's burgeoning skills. And as such, parents often become invested in their children's career from an early age. In a 2020 interview, Judy Murray, mother of three-time Grand Slam champion Andy Murray, explained, You have no idea how expensive it is to develop a young tennis player. Once they outgrow their county area, you have to travel. It's like going on holiday every week but without the fun, she said. It's hotels, accommodation, meals, physios, and nothing is coming back in because there's no prize money. It's an enormous expense, and it's why many kids and families pull out of it, because the costs are just beyond the average family. Tennis parents will often sacrifice weekends away with their child at tournaments, and with their child's transport, tournament registrations, accommodation and other logistical requirements to consider, paying for a travelling coach is a cost parents may choose to avoid. Instead, with some long waits between each match, they might choose to impart some words of wisdom themselves. It's an environment that can breed a strong bond between parent and player in their fledgling career. But why have some high-ranking players chosen to stick with their parent in the coaching role, despite being able to afford more established and qualified coaches instead? Well, trust is critical to a successful relationship on tour. Parents know their children better than anyone else. A hired coach may provide elite coaching from a technical perspective, but parent coaches seem to be effective in providing emotional support to their children while under pressure, thus providing them with a psychological edge. My dad has always been my coach, said former world number one Caroline Wozniacki of her father Piotr. I've spent so much time with him, he's one of my best friends, and I can talk to him about everything. Wozniacki's words imply that she and her father had a successful coach-athlete relationship because he could be both a strict disciplinarian who pushed her to improve and a best friend when appropriate. This type of parenting has been defined as optimal push, which is the process of motivating an athlete to limit laziness and maximize potential, while at the same time not overpressuring them in such a way to cause harm. Optimal push is a difficult parenting skill to master, but can significantly benefit players if done correctly. Maria Sharapova's father and former coach, Yuri Sharapov, balanced his strictness and softness in a way that fitted with his daughter's personality. Yuri seemed to be able to trust Maria's inner drive to succeed without being controlling, which perhaps contributed to the Russian's successful career. He really loved me from day one, she said. He had this incredible caring atmosphere like he really wanted the best for me. He kept me really humble, but his determination really taught me the right paths that I need to take with a clear mind. It's not just about being both taskmaster and comforter though. Parent coaches should still be skilled at coaching, with the added strength of being able to tailor that coaching to fit their child's personality and make it effective for both their tennis skills and their health and well-being. Now that on-court coaching is allowed by the WTA, we can see the benefits of players having their parent coach as psychological support in high-pressure moments. The most successful exchanges between players and coaches involve the coach merely encouraging or motivating his or her player while keeping technical instruction short and straightforward. Researchers at Augusta University and the University of Southern Mississippi backed this up. Their findings suggested that the most effective way of communicating with athletes must balance technical instruction and encouragement, with that balance skewed according to the athlete's needs and personality. Coaches must therefore have a deep understanding of what makes their players tick, such as their preferred communication style and stress responses. And who better to know those things than mum or dad? However, parent coaches can find it hard to separate their dual roles. Boundaries are therefore essential. Parent coaches may also feel they are harder on their children than another coach might be. Another difficult thing to grasp is accepting when, as a parent coach, you are wrong and hearing this from others. But potentially the worst thing a parent coach can do is press their ambitions onto their child, creating unfair or unrealistic expectations. In Andre Agassi's case, his father coached him and pushed him towards success from a young age. 
In one interview, he recalled that, while he was an infant, his father taped a ping-pong racket to my hand and put a ball over the crib where I could sit there and work on my game. His father's pressure motivated him because it was impressed upon him that his family relationships depended on his tennis success. Agassi achieved his father's dream of becoming the best tennis player in the world. Still, his father's ethics are questionable when you consider Agassi's later struggles with mental health, substance abuse, and personal identity. In their research on the ideal behaviors of tennis parents, Daniel Gould of Michigan State University and colleagues cited the following as examples of unhealthy behavior. 1. Expecting a return on financial investment in their child's tennis career. 2. Holding unrealistic expectations of their children's talents. 3. Focusing more on outcomes than processes. 4. Comparing their children to other children. 5. Being too controlling. 6. Being overly critical. And 7. Pampering. These can discourage players from continuing in the sport or negatively impact a player's mental health. It is, of course, encouraging for aspiring parent coaches to hear success stories, but there are examples of player and parent coach relationships turning sour. Parents being too controlling is seen in the failed relationships of Yelena Dokic and Mary Pierce and their respective fathers. In the case of Dokic, her father would frequently interfere with her career decisions, cause unnecessary fights at tournaments, and even got her to sign all of her assets over to him, leaving her with only a bag and her tennis equipment. He would also frequently abuse her both physically and mentally if she didn't comply with his demands. It was a similar case for Mary Pierce. Her father also abused her emotionally and physically. He dictated her career choices until 18, when she left home and filed a restraining order against him. To be successful, the player-parent-coach relationship needs to build on the foundations of unconditional love and mutual respect. Take Tony Nadal and nephew Rafael as a prime example. Together they share a deep love for the sport, have family values which emphasize hard work and high standards, and most importantly, have never allowed the idea of future success to dictate the relationship. As we've seen, for some, the player and parent-coach relationship can be a tough tightrope to walk. It's a fragile and risky commitment with many pitfalls, but get it right and the relationship can make a positive contribution to player development, resulting in thrilling performances and a successful career in professional tennis.